everyone, I'm Becky. And I'm Sarah. And we're doing Bickering Book Reviews. Today we are talking about Stay Sweet by Siobhan Vivian, which I believe I got through, I didn't say, Edelweiss, I think. Yeah. It's either Edelweiss or NetGalley. I got it through one of them. Actually, um, I got mine through NetGalley. So maybe I got it through NetGalley. I'm not sure. And just so we're all clear, I only learned how to pronounce Siobhan within the past year. Oh, really? I, I had no idea what that name was. There was a TV show a few years back where Sarah Michelle Gellar played the good twin and the evil twin, and uh, one of the twins was named this. Siobhan. That's, that's how yeah, I but that it. doesn't help you know how to spell it. I, I don't know. I, I mean, just, I've heard the name before. I yeah. just didn't... I guess I never knew how you spelled it. So this is irrelevant. That's not what the book was about. <laughs> this is irrelevant. Um, in the small town of Sand Lake, the local ice cream stand, Mead Creamery, is a tradition that dates back to World War II. The stand is run by local girls and only girls, with one lucky girl being promoted to head girl. This summer, Amelia is the head girl, and she is looking forward to being a fair manager and helping preserve the legacy of ice cream. However, when the owner of the stand passes away and leaves the stand to her great nephew, everything begins to change. So this book. This book. So I feel like we're at the same place, but we have different reasons for being at the same place. So it took me a hundred pages before I cared. I literally, the book felt boring for the first hundred pages. See, and it felt boring the entire time for me. And um, for me, I think I, my boring part, like I'll, I'll start it off. I, there was a lot of information about how to run an ice cream stand. And I just thought that that was boring. Like that, it didn't, it didn't progress the plot. I really didn't feel like there was much going on with the plot because we spent so much time trying to figure out how to successfully run this business ice cream stand. I also never really got in, like, <clears throat> I never was compelled by the romantic kind of connections. I didn't, I mean, it was just all just like bland and and just not interesting for me. So I actually kind of thought the making ice cream <coughs> was kind of interesting. I thought that was like the actual different ways and like how they did it. But that was the type of kid I was. Like, I wanted to learn how to make ice cream. And I'm always, like, I liked, I kind of liked Grady. And so I was okay with the romance. My problem was, like, the flashbacks to Molly Mead creating the stand was boring. And obvious. Where the plot ended up with Molly was obvious from about page oh, 40. completely. And I don't think it's because I'm an adult reading it. I think it's anybody would get that. Um, I also... It was so obvious and so... <laughs> That even when that kind of, um, as the main character is looking at the diary entries from Molly, I I didn't want to read those diary entries. I didn't entries, either. Which is very strange for me because I love diary entries. Like, they are usually my favorite parts of the book. But this one, I just, I, ugh, it was a struggle. It was a struggle. Well, and it really bugged me that they're acting like it's a girl power rah-rah book. But her best friend, who was helping <clears throat> her run the stand and then basically turned on her, was a full-blown mean girl and treated her like she was dirt. Like, like that really bothered me, the way that her friend Kate treated her. See, and I don't know if I had that um, strong of a reaction to it. I just feel like you can't promote girl power and then have girls turning on each other like that. It was, But it was definitely a very interesting kind of look at, like, feminism and girl power just... By some of the things that were being called misogynistic versus some of the things that weren't being called... Well, the, yeah. The, you know, it just, like, they wanted to call themselves girls, but, like, it wasn't okay if somebody else called them girls. Like, why why would you want that? And, like, it was just, I don't know. There was just, like, a lot of pieces to it that were just, like, this, this doesn't completely match the narrative that you're trying to create. Right. And I just like, and maybe it would have been better if it was in first person, because I was looking back on Goodreads, and I liked her book, Not That Kind of Girl. But now I'm kind of like, if I go back and read it, would I still like it as much as I thought I did? Um, and it was a first person narrative, and I didn't like the list as much, which they're supposed to be turning into a TV show. Um, but I don't remember if it was a first person, because there were so many stories, there was a lot of narrative going on there. So maybe it was because the, the third person narrative I thought was boring. Yeah, and I've never, I've only read... Kind of one other book by her. I read, um, is it Burn for Burn? Oh, the one she I wrote with like Jenny and I didn't like that. I never cared I enough to read the other ones. I don't like a lot. I don't, I don't like typically like stories like that. So this was really my kind of my first interaction with Siobhan Vivian. Yeah. So, like I said, I was expecting a fluffy little fun book that was going to take me like a day and a half to read at night. It took a little bit longer than that. I don't think it took me longer than that. I just didn't enjoy it. We should read it. 
Okay. Our rating scale starts at the top with five unicorns. We go down to two unicorns. If we don't like it, it's a horse. Where are you? I'm at two unicorns. I was just bored. I was at a two, I went two and a half, and I said three on Goodreads, but now I'm kind of like at a two. Now that I'm talking about it, yeah, I think I'm at a two, sadly. So that's where we are on Stay Sweet, and see you later. All right. Bye. bye.